my ultimate life coach is the Ramchal. He starts off his book, the Messiah Sharim, talking about goals, about go- growing step by step, about awareness, about everything that life coaches talk about. And he starts off his book with a very powerful sentence, when I think the most powerful part of all coaching. And that sentence, we got to remember it, learn it, take it over, let it take over our souls. The sentence is, Yisoda chasidut v'shoresh ha'avodah ha'timimah shit barer v'it amet etzel ha'adam ma hovato ba'olamo It is fundamental for you, for all of man, that it should be clear what is your purpose in this world. What's your goal? The first and most important part of growth is to know why you are who you are. And who are you? And why are you here? This is the beginning of all coaching. And this is the beginning of being the ultimate Jew that you could be. One of the the prayers that shake me to the core every year is a prayer we say on the High Holidays. Elokai, Achlo notzarti, eni kedai. V'achshav she notzarti, kiru lo notzarti. My God, before I was created, I was unworthy. And now that I was created, it's as if I had not been created. Rabbi Avram Kook explains something beautiful. All of our souls, we were created at the very beginning of time, 6,000 years ago. And the soul, your soul, was waiting 6,000 years for the time that it has its script ready, for the time that you're going to get up on stage and be you. And then all of a sudden, after it's t- finally time when you're worthy, you forget your script. You forget who you're supposed to be in this play, in this movie. Who are you? You're being somebody else. And now that I'm created, it's as if I wasn't created. If we could just realize, know, and accept our purpose, then we could be the greatest people. And there is one thing that stops us. Something that is so powerful, so persuasive. It can make you lose out on your identity. FOMO. Let us rewind and go back to an old story. Story that begins at the beginning of time. Where Adam and Chava are having the ultimate life. Angels grilling them steaks, pouring them wine. And the snake comes to persuade Chava to eat from the forbidden fruit. The fruit that will bring death to the world. And how does he do it? How does he persuade her? And look closely at the words and you'll notice that he does what we call FOMO. He makes her fear that she's missing out on something. He tells her, You will be, you could be, like God, if you just eat this fruit. You'll know the difference between good and bad if you eat from the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge. And Chava, believe it or not, falls for it. And you know what? We all fall for it. We all fall for this fear that we might be missing out on being somebody else. Now, of course, Chava was a great woman, and as great as she was, she wants to be godly. That's her greatest life's passion, to be godly. And she sees this opportunity, I could be somebody else. I could be godly, really godly. And she can't let go. And this is something that goes on by us too. That we have this fear that we are missing out on being somebody else. And we forget to look inward and to ask ourselves, hey, I could be this great person if I would just stop looking around. Stop seeing how that one is great like that and that one has a beautiful life and this one has the best business. No, no, no. Let's just see what I really want. What's important to me? And that's the key. The first key to identity. To realize that there is a fear 
fear of missing out. Think about it. What is the drive behind man checking his smartphone on average 250 times a day? What is the reason why men sometimes look where they're not supposed to look? What is the drive for us to be looking and checking emails more than we check out on our own children? What is the drive for us to sometimes fall into the marketing schemes of buy one get one free or and we end up buying things that we don't even need? The answer is FOMO. That's how powerful it is. It's the most powerful form of persuasion is that you fear that you're missing out. Fear of missing out is just like any other fear. It's an emotion. And the fear has in it something very interesting. It has a special pathway to the brain that it just skips over the chance of you getting a chance to think it through if you should resp how you should respond. Like, imagine opening your bedroom door at night time, you're very tired, you see a snake on the floor in your room. You just turn around and run away without even thinking that's the best thing you should do. Because the response to that stimuli is a response of fear. And that's why God created the, the brain of man is that it has that special fight or flight response to fear. So that's also how we sometimes fall into the fear of FOMO, fear of missing out. That even though it's not really, if we would think it through, if we would decelerate our thinking, the opposite of accelerate, which we actually do, we decelerate, we slow down, and we think, hey, is this really what's good for me? If we just do that, then we could deal with this fear in a better way. Just stop. That's why coaching is so powerful. Because with somebody else there with you, you are forced to think and not just run away. And not just run to somebody you're not. So how does one nip FOMO in the bud? How does somebody stop himself from letting this fear of missing out take over his identity? And there is a very powerful word we use in coaching, a very powerful thing that can help him is awareness. Awareness of what's happening. You see, just being aware of a fear is usually at least 50% of the solution to the fear. Just realizing that it's a fear, it's irrational, it's not good for me. And awareness, in the case of FOMO, of missing out on who I am, on my identity, is the price by recognizing the price that we're paying by trying to be somebody else. The price is the worst thing that you could be paying is you're losing out on yourself. That price, the, just awareness of that, of what I, how great I could be, is a tremendous motivator. It's just that awareness that we need. Be aware of your background. Be aware of your position, of your strengths and weaknesses that God gave you. You'll know who you are like that. Be aware of your passion. Be aware of your desires and your values. Make the best of you. And I'll leave you with a small poem from Dr. Seuss. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know, and you are the guy who will decide where to go. See you next time.